I'm number 11 of the Fatui Harbingers, codenamed Child, but I also go by Tartaglia. And you, hmm, you too like to cause quite the stir, don't you? Something tells me we're going to get along splendidly. This is Tartaglia or child, however you want to call him. So uh, this has kind of been a long time coming and uh, this one kind of gets us back on track. I know that I kind of took some some liberties in the direction that we were going. So back when we actually took a poll for this one, uh, <laughs> so child actually got 52% of 60 thousand votes which is pretty insane child definitely deserves some time to go over here so we're gonna give that to him today now just a quick note before we get started uh thank you so much we actually had 20,000 subs a couple days ago it's like a week ago maybe i don't know uh i was shooting for 15,000 before the end of the year and we have hit 20,000 so appreciate that also to everybody who subbed to my brother he was trying to hit a thousand before actually he was trying to hit 800 before the end of the year and he hit a thousand so that's pretty amazing if you're interested in uh trying to help support in any way uh don't feel pressure to by the way there is merch there's channel memberships and stuff like that that are linked down below so child is one of the husbandos that i know a lot of people are going to be upset if i mess anything up in this video so please please go easy if you will child is a hydro character who uses a bow and uh he recently just got a new set of artifacts that work really really well on him and we're gonna go over a little bit about this artifact set which we'll kind of mess around with here in a little bit since we're already here on our talents let's go ahead and jump in so our normal attack is going to perform six consecutive shots with a bow charge attack is going to be an aim shot dealing hydro damage and it's going to apply riptide when it hits so riptide is this kind of like super special thing specific to child so opponents affected by riptide will suffer from aoe hydro damage effects when attacked by tartaglia in various ways damage dealt in this way is considered normal attack damage riptide flash a fully charged aim shot that hits an opponent affected by riptide deals consecutive bouts of aoe damage and can occur once every 0.7 seconds riptide burst when defeating an opponent affected by riptide it creates a hydro burst that inflicts the riptide status on nearby opponents hit so essentially there is two different things that you're gonna have that you're gonna see here with riptide it's gonna get applied and then as you're attacking the enemies that have riptide if if you're hitting them with a fully charged aim shot you're gonna see that they're gonna have some aoe damage and then once that enemy is defeated it's actually going to burst and it's going to deal aoe damage to other nearby opponents as well and then we do have a plunging attack which fires off a shower of arrows like every other character just fall in style here you can kind of see how all of that breaks down we have our six shots we have our aim shot fully charged aim shot now this is at level six and i'm kind of cheating a little bit because i'm using uh his his talent here to increase the level by one so i can kind of save some materials but anyways uh this is at level six and you can kind of see how all of this stuff breaks down there is a lot to go over so i'm just going to kind of let you guys look at it and kind of determine how you feel about it Next, we actually have Foul Legacy Raging Tide. This is what makes Child so unique. This is essentially another normal attack. And I know that sounds kind of dumb at first, but the way that this works is he changes his stance and instead of a bow user, he ends up becoming a melee attacker with two short sword kind of things. Unleashes a set of weaponry made of pure water, dealing hydro damage to surrounding opponents and entering a melee stance. In this stance, Tartaglia's normal and charged attacks are converted to pure hydro damage that cannot be overridden by any other elemental infusion. And the change is as follows. So he still performs up to six consecutive strikes as a full combo. His charge attack is a certain amount of stamina that unleashes two quick slashes with uh, dealing hydro damage. And the Riptide Slash, when hitting an opponent affected by Riptide with a melee attack, it unleashes a Riptide Slash that deals AoE hydro damage. Damage dealt in this way is considered elemental skill damage and can only occur once every 1.5 seconds. Riptide again comes into play and it does actually uh, still do a ton more damage and this is kind of what makes 
child pretty insane when it comes to DPS. After 30 seconds or whenever the ability is unleashed again, the skill will actually end. So you can actually toggle this on and off. When you toggle it off, he will return to his range stance and the ability will enter its cooldown. The longer he is in this melee stance, the longer the cooldown. And if the return to a range stance occurs automatically after 30 seconds, the cooldown is even longer. So the one thing to note is don't forget to turn this off. <laughs> I forget all the time. And it's like a 45 second cooldown or something like that. It's pretty insane. It's it, it's nutty. Yeah, max cooldown, 45 seconds. <laughs> it's dumb. But anyways, uh, you can kind of see here, as soon as you actually activate the stance, it does do a small bit of damage here, the 101% at level six. And you can kind of see all of the, uh, the hits and how they break down. The charge attack damage is really nice. And there's kind of like an optimal, like, pattern that you can do with child if you want more information on that i'm going to leave a pretty detailed guide down in the description um, that you can kind of check out but uh, you can see how the rest of this stuff breaks down if you're at all interested next we actually have havoc obliteration performs different attacks based on which stance you're actually in so if you're in your range stance meaning you don't have your elemental skill applied this is going to be flash of havoc so swiftly fires a hydra imbued magic arrow dealing aoe hydra damage and applying the riptide status returns a portion of its energy cost after use if you're in your melee stance, it's called Light of Obliteration and performs a slash with large AOE dealing massive hydro damage to all surrounding opponents, which triggers Riptide Blast. Okay, so what is Riptide Blast? When the obliterating waters hit an opponent affected by Riptide, it clears their Riptide status and triggers a hydro explosion that deals AOE hydro damage. Damage dealt in this way is considered elemental burst damage. And here you can kind of see how this breaks down. This is an insane, <laughs> an insane multiplier. So not only is the skill damage insanely high, uh, it is higher in the melee, so just remember that, but uh, you also get the Riptide Blast. It's only on 15 second cooldown. It's only 60 energy. It's pretty nutty. As far as our other talents go, these are our Ascension talents. We do have uh, Never Ending, which extends Riptide duration by eight seconds. That's great. Uh, we do have Swords of Torrents. So when Tartaglia is in Foul Legacy Raging Tides melee stance, so basically when your elemental skill is active, on dealing a critical hit, normal and charged attacks apply the Riptide status effect to opponents. So this is the reason that I was talking about my artifacts being a little whack, because I want crit rate as much as possible, and I'll if I can remember, I'll go back and show two different artifact sets so we can kind of see um, the difference because applying the Riptide status gets enemies, especially smaller mobs that are going to be killed relatively quickly. It accelerates the time that it takes to kill that entire mob quite a bit. That, that's just a preference of mine that you can kind of build in whichever way you want to. We also have Master of Weaponry, so it increases the own party member's normal attack level by one. So this is actually really nice because those characters that you have, you know, like maxed out, you know, you're waiting on like, you know, weekly materials or you're waiting on gold books or whatever you're waiting on, um, th this will increase it for you by one. So you can kind of get around some of that if you're having issues. Now, as far as constellations go, I don't assume most people are going to be uh, at the higher constellations for a five star, but uh, we're definitely going to go over them here. So at C1, it's called Tide Withholder. Decreases the cooldown of Raging Tide by 20%. So your elemental skill gets, you know, a, a lot faster. 20% of a maximum of 30 seconds, as long as you kill it before it expires itself. Uh, that's kind of nice. At level two, we have Understream. So when opponents affected by Riptide are defeated, Tartaglia regenerates four elemental energy. That's actually really nice because that just helps you get off that insanely high scaling burst so much faster. At level three, it increases uh, Raging Tide by three, which is amazing already. At C4, if he's in his melee stance, triggers Riptide Slash against opponents on the field affected by Riptide every four seconds. Otherwise, it triggers Riptide Flash. So Riptide Slashes and Riptide Flashes triggered by this constellation effect are not subject to the time intervals that would typically apply to those two Riptide effects, nor do they have any effect on those time intervals. That's a lot to digest. It applies Slash or Flash. So let's roll back over here really quick just because. Okay, so it basically applies Riptide Flash, a fully charged aim shot that hits an opponent affected by this. It, it, it does this or 
it will do this one and they're not subject to the time constraints. Yeah, they're not subject to the time intervals that would typically apply to the two Riptide effects. Sounds like more damage. Next, we have Formless Blade, which increases obliteration by three, perfectly fine. And then we have Annihilation. So when obliteration is cast in melee stance, the cooldown of your elemental skill is reset. That's insane. This effect will only take place when Tartaglia returns to his ranged stance. That's that's nutty. That's so nutty. So one of the things about getting massive DPS numbers off with Child is being able to kind of go back and forth and weave in and out of his melee stance with his charge shots and stuff like that. Like just being able to switch between normal attacks and your elemental skill attacks is uh, pretty important. And anything that helps you do that faster is going to be pretty insane. One thing to note is there's not really a, a reason to use Child as a support. I there's, there's some people that have apparently used him as a Hydro Burst for vaporizing and stuff like that. Um, but typically you wanna build Child as a main DPS and just roll with it. Okay, now when it comes to weapons, this is uh, kind of gonna be a tough debate. So the reason that this is gonna be kind of a difficult topic is because there are a lot of weapons that just refuse to work with child's elemental skill the weapons that we're going to go over are heavily tested there's been a ton of people doing a ton of testing and like i said the there's going to be a lot of information down in the description if you're you know looking for extra information more than i can explain in this video definitely go check that out so whenever we're talking about like top choices skyward harp is one of the top choices i would say skyward harp and rust are going to be heavily debated on which one is better i don't have rust powered up i've never used rust on any of my characters i just got it on the albedo banner but skyward harp i know is what a lot of people consider to be the best in slot weapon for child if he is doing single target damage. If you are trying to kill a single enemy, Skyward Heart makes a lot of sense. Rust falls into that same category in the sense that it is going to help give you a ton of extra damage, but you don't really lose anything with Rust because it, it decreases charge attack damage by 10%. And you're not super worried about that if it increases your normal attack damage by 40%. So Rust is actually really, really strong. Skyward Harp, super, super strong. Obviously Rust is a little bit more obtainable, but Rust does actually fall off depending on your refinement level. So Rust for child can actually get kind of expensive. Essentially the way that it was, that it's broken down. Skyward Harp is going to be like top choice unless you have Rust at refinement level five. Refinement level five on Rust is going to be your top choice if you don't have Skyward Harp. Then it would be Rust at refinement level four. Then you would want to consider the Amos's bow if you don't have Rust at refinement level four. Amos's bow is going to do a ton of work and it, it basically is going to give you attack percent and it's going to help increase your normal charge attack damage by 12%. And uh, it's going to basically increase normal charge attack damage by 8% for every 0.1 seconds up to five times. So it uh, is just a normal and charge attack beast like that's literally what it does it's it's amazing for that then we actually include the very distant hunt so this is actually the one that i personally use because this was the only option that i really had when i got child and it's just the one that i powered up since i do actually have rust i only have rust at refinement rank one right now so it's not like it would be a huge deal to like replace very distant with rust but anyways uh, Veridescent is one of these interesting, it's basically like a mini Venti in a bow because every 14 seconds you can pretty much make a small cyclone that sucks enemies in and allows child to basically group up his enemies and then do a ton of damage. The benefit to that is as the Riptide explodes, it's going to deal that small bit of AOE damage. And since everybody's grouped up together, this makes like killing off mobs insanely fast. It really, really like accelerates the time to kill an enemy. Like it's insane. That's why I personally like it. I think that it's a funner weapon. Um, Although I really haven't tried anything like Rust or Skyward or Amos's Bow. It's amazing. It's it's hilarious to see some, some of the stuff you can do with it. Then after that would just be regular rank refinement one Rust. All right. So 
it, it's it's still a very very solid weapon but as its refinement goes up it really really gets good so if you are one of those people that has you know multiple rust if you got lucky or if you just you know have invested in getting rust it's good it's, it's very good then we actually have the black cliff warbow which <laughs> If you haven't noticed, none of these are very free to play friendly. We're going to talk about one, but none of these are very free to play friendly. Uh, the Warbow basically it has crit damage on it. Because you are going to be building crit rate into your artifacts, you could go with the Black Cliff Warbow. I like the Very Distant has crit rate in it, so it's not as like. I personally just prefer crit rate. That's just me. That's just the way I play. If you already have a ton of crit rate built into your artifacts, then maybe the Warbow makes some more sense because you could get extra damage off with it. But applying Riptide is, is very important. Very, very important when there's multiple enemies and stuff like that. So it's just the way that I've learned to kind of feel comfortable playing child. And then for the one and only <laughs> free to play weapon would be the prototype crescent simply because it can be crafted uh it does have attack percent on it charge attacks hit on weak points increase movement speed and attack by 36 sec uh, percent that's actually really really nice although it kind of forces you to play into charge attacks a little bit more often than maybe some people are comfortable with but i mean if you can get used to that it, it definitely it definitely is like best free to play option Last but not least, we actually have the Royal Bow. So upon damaging an opponent, increases crit rate by 8%, max five stacks, and crit hit removes all stacks. I personally am not a fan of that, simply because the crit hit removes all stacks. Um, but, I mean, extra crit rate in the passive is okay. Uh, attack percent is fine. Um, not my preferred weapon choice, but still very viable so when it comes to these artifacts uh we've already spoken on the new set the heart of depths uh this literally is worded in a way that makes child like the sole <laughs> use case for it uh but anyways hydro damage bonus plus 15 percent and then after using an elemental skill increases normal charge stack damage by 30 percent for 15 seconds that's that's insane. When I first read this, the immediate reaction that I had was, oh, that's child. That's, that's perfectly set up for child. And through quite a bit of testing that has been done, not by myself, but by others, uh, this does seem to be best in slot for him right now. It does say that there is a little bit more testing that needs to be done on it. But in general, this seems to be outperforming a lot better than other sets will. So if you haven't farmed this set completely, you can kind of work around it if you want to you could actually just do a two piece of this and a two piece of noblis for the elemental burst damage uh because his burst is insanely scaled as it is uh just getting an extra 20 percent damage off on it is <laughs> great or you could go with a two piece of the heart of depth here and you could go with a two piece of gladiators for the extra 18 percent of attack uh this will be the other set that i can show off um I, I mean i have a two piece of noblest but uh, i think this would be more beneficial uh just to show uh after that you can kind of just mix and match these three sets all around so if you wanted to do a two piece of glad and a two piece of noblest that's what i ran for quite a while um that's actually really good or if you actually want to you could do a two piece of the wonders troop and a two piece of noblest as well uh just to kind of get some extra elemental mastery so that basically you can have extra elemental mastery and just do extra elemental damage on top of what you're already doing which is pretty nutty. Now, whichever way you end up setting up your artifacts, there's a couple of different things about his kit. Uh, obviously, his elemental skill does pure hydro damage, so a hydro-based cup is top choice. After that, crit rate, crit damage. Like I said, I prefer crit rate on my build just because I want to apply that riptide as quickly as I possibly can. But uh, crit damage, of course, can, you know, that one to two ratio still makes tons of sense, especially on a main DPS. It, it just makes sense. It, it's good. After that, you can focus on attack, which is nice. It's great. And if you can sprinkle in some energy recharge across any of these substats as possible, just to kind of help get to that burst and do that burst a lot. Now, when it comes to leveling up these talents, this is going to be kind of depending on how you play child. If you see yourself using charge attacks or just the regular normal attacks more often, then this actually makes a lot of sense. 
my play style personally i try to be into this this melee stance as often as i can um just because i feel like doing the hydro damage and setting up with like any kind of other elemental procs that you can get out whether it's freezing uh whether it's you know vaporized whether whatever it is as long as you can get into the stance and do hydro damage that's kind of what's fun to play child uh, in my opinion definitely don't forget about this i would say choose one of these two depending on which which play style you play prioritize that one over the other one and then prioritize your elemental burst second and then you can kind of go back and fill in whichever one you didn't power up the first time that, that's just how i've done it uh this was i literally leveled this up this morning for this video I, I don't i don't ever use it if i don't have to okay so we're gonna hop down here and we're gonna fight this ridge is fine now we're gonna do two runs of this uh first run is going to be where we use the full heart of depth um everything is leveled up on this set except for the circlet um simply because i don't want to level up crit damage just it's not optimal for me uh a plus 20 on the hydra bonus and then plus 16 on basically everything else all of the substats are completely trash except for this one this is actually a pretty decent piece uh it's the only piece that i feel like was decent uh everything else is pretty much just for the video purposes i'll end up dumping mm, probably this piece and this piece into something else simply because i just don't like them here's what the stat breakdown looks like with our first run of artifacts now for your normal attack you do have a a plunging attack but for your foul your your elemental skill you don't have one so just remember that because i always seem to forget that all right so we're going to go into our melee stance and you can see all hydro damage there yep and you can see it knocks that down and we're just going to do hydro damage now according to what i've seen apparently the most optimal combo is three hits and then your charge attack charge attack one two three charge attack and then you can kind of do that. So we're going to come off cooldown. And you can see that's already a 25 second cooldown, which is pretty nuts. Charge attack. And that's perfect. All right. So as you can see, we're still kind of stuck in our normal attack stance, which is kind of a bummer. And you can see that kind of cyclone that, uh, that the Veridescent Hunt provides for me. All right. And one cool thing that I tend to use a lot, I am, I'm a big i switch a lot i switch between characters a lot so it's actually kind of nice that uh if you switch off of child it will actually reset your elemental skill cooldown so let's see if we can break this now let's get this elemental burst all right so we're in ranged so we're gonna hit this and you can see okay you can kind of see how that works let's see if we can hit this all right so now we're gonna do the melee stance one so you can see we're just going to hit this. He's got the Riptide applied and boom. Quick note, uh, teleporting does not remove the cooldown from your, uh, or does not switch off of your melee stance. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, so to make this a little bit more fair, we're going to go with crit rate and it's going to be a non-powered up piece. So just like this one wasn't leveled at all, this one's not leveled at all. The only difference is that it's going to have crit rate instead of crit damage, which is fine. Okay, let's, let's do this piece instead. We'll do this attack piece so that it won't have as much of a, a difference. So basically, this is what we had. This is what we're switching to. This is what we had. This is what we're switching to. Here's what the stat breakdown of the second run. Now remember, we're not actually trying to go for like crazy numbers here. I just wanna see between the two artifact sets, which one performs better, okay? So let's, uh, let's hop down here and let's see if we can. I'm gonna shoot me a Regis Vine. Okay, and gonna get into our melee stance here. There we go. Okay, so this feels better. Although I'm not, I'm not 100% sure if it is better. So I'm gonna do some some editing in post to try to try to see which one's actually better.
Okay, there's our burst. Yeah, I feel like that... I feel like this set makes it a little bit better. I feel like this is a lot better than... than the four-piece for me, just with my current artifact setup. Hmm. Okay, it's very interesting. I feel like that set felt smoother to me. Um, and it's not like it really affected my capabilities as a hydro attacker because I still get the 15% extra hydro damage. I just don't get the extra normal attack damage, but I get extra attack. Now, through further testing, like I said, um, it's still to be determined if a full four piece is absolutely the best. As of right now, it, it seems as though the testing shows it favorably, but through real world experience, at least with my substats, artifact builds, stuff like that, it makes more sense for me to go with the two piece glad. So that's probably what I will switch to, uh, which means I wasted a lot of time farming for even the crappy pieces that I got. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it guys. Child is one of those characters that if you have him, he is insanely good. If you can also invest in him, I do think that he's quite expensive. The weapon choices for him are insanely, insanely tight. Uh, the fact that you need like high level rust or you need five star weapons, uh, you have to buy the battle pass or you have to buy something from the shop, like stuff like that makes him extremely expensive and even low spending players could potentially have a decent child. I feel like mine's decent. I don't spend like a ton of money on this game. You guys call me a whale in, in post sometimes because <laughs> I refill resin, but I, I actually don't spend a lot of money on this game and I feel like my my child is okay. He's definitely not like top tier. Um, he is going to be my second team's like main DPS, and I'm going to eventually pair him with uh, something. I don't know. I, I've been working on Deluke because I just pulled him. Uh, I'm trying to get like some vaporized stuff going on, but I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm doing yet. But anyways, child, very nice, very nice. If you can afford him, he, he's very very nice. If you can't get a, a solid weapon for him, if you can't go for like high level artifacts, it may be quite a while before you can make him work, but you could slowly chip away and definitely make it happen. So that's pretty much it for child. Um, I will post another poll as soon as this gets posted and we will go over some some more things that we're going to talk about. I think for this go around, since we actually already did Kaya and Diona, um, I actually have a full set. Uh, Zhang Ling is the only returning character this go around. Oreo, what are you doing? You're hung in my shirt. You're crazy. Um, Zhang Ling is the only returning character. So we'll probably go with uh, just all four stars this go around simply because Child is a five star and we're going to flop back and forth. Um, we may do like Zhang Ling, probably the characters that we haven't talked about, maybe Ning Wong, Lisa, and uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe Chong Yun or Bennett. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. I think a lot of people, a lot of people have been asking for Bennett, so I'll probably throw him in there. I know he's going to win it. Um, but anyways, I haven't, I haven't fully got him. I've been working on him, but uh, expensive. Although this event has been amazing. Look at this. Look at this. So good. But yeah. See you guys next time. Major shout out to Cherry Blue, who is a YouTube member.